In this week's video, I'm posing the question, are you a looker or a seer? Unsure what I mean? Stay tuned as all will be explained later in the video. Well, hello and welcome to the countryside. This week, we've got a lot of sunshine and showers forecast. And yesterday and this morning, there was some phenomenal clouds in the sky. So this afternoon, I've come out to the countryside to try and get a beautiful vantage point of these beautiful clouds. Now, right now, they're not quite as good as they were this morning or yesterday, but things are changing every few minutes. So. It's a case of doing some mindful photography this afternoon, just watching the skyline change every few minutes and trying to pick out things in the distance that I can use to complement the clouds, to tell an interesting story and uh, just see, just see what sort of images unfold this afternoon. I've got my 100 to 400 millimetre lens with me so I can zoom right into those cloud formations and we'll just see what images I manage to create today. The first image I'm going to take today is just behind me here. There's a few trees on the, the skyline, beautiful evergreen trees that are acting as a lovely focal point with the beautiful clouds behind them. And those clouds are a lovely mix of dark and light shades and interesting shapes. So by combining them together, it can create a really nice image. I've already created the photograph of this scene. I'm going to share it with you now. Now behind me here we have a wind farm. It's not something I'd normally choose to photograph, but the clouds that are surrounding the wind turbines are pretty dramatic. On the camera I'm filming with, which has got my 24 to 200 millimeter lens on it, it, the wind turbines look really interesting. This 100 to 400, for some reason, it doesn't have quite the same effect. But what I think I might do is take an image in a standard crop and potentially then crop it into more of a panoramic style image when I get home to the computer, just to really showcase, I guess, the line of, of turbines and how they're towering today into the sky and how the clouds are, are framing them. The clouds right now are quite dramatic, so... Uh, Let's see what images I can create. This scene looks incredible on video, but it just doesn't look the same on camera. I'm going to try it with that lens, maybe underexpose a little bit to emphasise the clouds. I'm potentially doing a little bit of stuff in post-processing could help to emphasise them too. It's just nice how there's a darker line of clouds uh, above this tree in, in the centre of the field. I have to say I found this image difficult to edit and I'm not completely happy with the final results. I didn't quite feel the same connection to this as the previous images, but I'm sharing it regardless to give you a sense of what I was envisaging. Now the rain has well and truly started, so everything is in this haze now. So it's quite difficult to, of course, photograph the clouds. So I think it's time for now to, to call it a day and uh, maybe try again, well, either later today or, or tomorrow. We've got a whole week of this ahead of us. So let's see what else comes as the a, as a week unfolds. Mm -hmm. 
So it's now later in the week and I've been out a couple of times since filming the first half of this video to try and find some more clouds that I felt that deep connection to that really stood out amongst the sky and that I could create similar images with. But unfortunately things just haven't materialised that way. Either I've been out and it's been raining or I've been out and the sky's been very overcast and when the clouds have been available, the really interesting atmospheric ones, I've not been in a position, i.e. I've been doing something else, I've not been able to photograph them. But what I have been doing the rest of this week is macro photography and it really got me thinking about something that keeps coming up to me in my own work. And I keep saying to myself, I really have to see the scene before me. I really have to see the subject before me. And it got me thinking about sharing this with you guys. I wanna pose this question to you. Are you a looker or are you a seer? And what I mean by that is when you go out onto location, do you merely look around you and think, oh, that'll make a good photograph. There we go, I've taken an image of it. Or do you really see it? Do you think that looks really nice, that looks gonna make a good photograph? Really connect with it, look at every single part of it, everything that's around it, and see the whole scene around you, everything that's happening, and also to see everything as being interconnected. When you get really connected to nature specifically, you realize that there's this oneness in nature. Everything around me is interconnected. Often a lot of the, the plants and the, the wildlife species, they're all helping each other. And us humans are also interconnected with nature. We are all one. And when you take this concept into your imagery and you're looking at a scene or a subject, you and you start to consider this oneness, this connectedness, it really helps you to compose that image and create an image that comes from a deep emotional place and a place of deep connection. And let me take the first image I shared with you in this video, the scene with the, the few trees sticking up on the, on the horizon, almost silhouetted there against the beautiful clouds. I didn't just look at the scene and go, oh, there's some trees and the clouds, I'll, I'll take a photograph of that. I really saw it. I saw the trees and each individual tree and its uniqueness and its beauty. And I thought about the best way to frame them in my image, where to put them and what sense and feeling that would create. I really saw the sky, the clouds, each shape and texture and pattern and color within them. And then I brought all of this together by picking and using my long lens to create an image that really encompassed the whole scene. And as a result, I love that image because to me, it feels very emotive. It was very considered. I took a lot of time just admiring admiring that scene and composing that image so that it really spoke to me based on everything I was taking in and seeing. And I'm now going to share with you some images that I created yesterday, some macro images. And again, each individual part of it was so carefully considered in relation to what subjects I was choosing and how I was then choosing to frame them in the scene. I'm going to begin with this beautiful moth that I found in the vegetation, sheltering from the rain. When creating these images, I didn't just look at the moth and photograph it. I really saw it and how it played in with the scene around it. I thought about the rain and how it was using the leaves almost like an umbrella. I considered how to frame the moth in relation to the leaves to create a pleasing composition. I also wanted to ensure the contrast of the green foliage was shown in the image and some rain was present too, so the wet weather was clearly represented. By truly seeing the scene, I was able to not only photograph the moth, but really feel into the whole scene and create an image representing what I was seeing. For the second image, I considered all the things just mentioned, but also thought about how depth of field could enhance the image, allowing me to create this one here, with more emphasis on the moth itself. Up next is an image of this lovely ladybird. I made many images of her, but this one came out in a way that I felt deeply connected to. Here she is walking down a blade of grass. Again, I didn't just consider her, but the whole scene that surrounded her. Despite her red colour, she was well hidden. I wanted to represent this by ensuring she was framed by some of the foliage. I had to wait for her to move into a pleasing angle and was lit enough by the natural light to allow both her and the raindrops on her wings to be shown. And 
lastly, we have these beautiful purple plants. Again, I didn't only look and photograph them. I saw their colours, the colours that surrounded them, where each plant was in relation to each other, their shape. I then created this image to allow all these factors to be taken into consideration. The main thing for me in this case was the colour and how the purple and green complemented each other. Now I have to say I'm really enjoying bringing these more philosophical questions into both my photography but also sharing it with you guys because this is something that I go through a lot, like I say, in my own work and to be able to share it with you guys and get you to think about these things in your own work, I hope it'll just add something to to what you're creating, the imagery that you're creating when you're out and about and just really help you to, I guess, come within and really think about what am I photographing? Why am I photographing it? Am I really seeing the whole scene? How can I bring the whole thing together? And this is all very timely for me because this week I've been hosting a webinar to my online community about discovering your interests as a photographer, discovering your innate interests. You know, what interests you? Why does it interest you? What are you initially drawn to when you go out with your camera? And giving everybody the opportunity to delve into their own photographic journeys and uncover themselves through photography. I've just found photography to be incredibly eye-opening for me in terms of bringing me that connection to nature and helping me see so much more that I otherwise wouldn't have seen without the joys of something like photography, but also with that means of just having a reason to get outdoors, go out with a camera. It gives you that reason and I think that's so incredibly beautiful. So let me know in the description box below are you a looker or are you a seer? And if you feel you're one of the, these photographers that merely looks at the scene, I'd love to invite you to really see it. See what you're photographing, see every element of it and see how it relates to everything around it. And also how you're connecting to it. Feel into the oneness of the beautiful natural world and our connection to that, your connection to it as a photographer. And how does that enrich your photography? Because when we develop that connection and we bring all these pieces together, the experience is deepened massively. And often the imagery we create doesn't just mean so much more to us, but the people that view that imagery feel a much deeper connection to it too. Because the energy you've put into that photograph and the thought you've put into it and the connection you had, it's felt in the image. And I think that's so incredibly beautiful. As always, I want to say a huge thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you all again next Sunday.